All right, everybody, so this is page three of lesson 2.4 notes. It's a longer lesson again. Once again, there's a lot of information we're going to give you this year, and I want to make sure I challenge you as we go forward, so let's begin. Some of these word problems here, Teresa will rent a car for the weekend. Um, she can choose one of two plans. The first plan has an initial fee, so we know, as we had talked about before, as you write things down, we're going to go. So we know we're dealing with two plans here, so we have first one. And then we know we're going to have a second one here. All right, so the first one is she has an initial fee of $65.98. So we know we're going to have $65.98 and costs an additional $0.08 cents a mile. Okay, so we know we're also going to have $0.08 cents a mile. All right, and then the second plan has an initial fee of $55.98 and costs an additional $0.12 cents a mile. How many miles would Teresa need to drive for the two plans to cost the same? Simple, right? Here's our setup. Now you just make them equal to each other on the other sides. All right, so you have to make sure you write it out. Now, I will say, once again, with this particular one, when we start dealing with money um, and we start dealing with decimals, um, I do know that there is a limit on which you guys can do the math and, and be honest, same with me. So you're going to need a calculator probably to finish off the final, the finality of this actual problem. All right, so first things first is let's move the x variable over to where it's not negative. So we're going to subtract 0.08x and then subtract 0.08x. And if we do that, know that this has got to go to the other side. So we're going to have to subtract 55.98 and subtract 55. 98. Okay, so now you do your math. This actually comes out, I can do that in my head, that's 10, right? Because that cancels out, and then those equal, and it's going to be 0.04x. If you want to put it in a calculator, you can, but no, when you do the division on that, ladies and gentlemen, it comes out to be, right? Because what you're doing is the very last piece would be divide by 0 0.04, divide by 0.04. Four. Okay. Now the next one here, a small publishing company has a new book. The production costs will include a one-time fixed cost, such as editing, and variable costs, such as printing. Reality. The one-time fixed costs will total 47502 Okay, so we have one cost, 47502 Alright, that's if we do it one time. The variable costs will be $9.25 per book. Okay, now the publisher let me redo this. All right, the variable costs are going to be, because this is what you know you're going to have to pay up front. By the way, I used to have to do this all the time when a company I worked for printed catalogs, uh, but we were talking millions of dollars, not just this smaller amount. Okay, it's got this and the variable costs, such as printing. The variable will be $9.25 per book, okay? The publisher will sell the finished product for $25 a book. How many books will the publisher need to produce to make an equal amount of sales? If you don't think you will ever, ever, never use this in real life, you will, ladies and gentlemen. This is pretty much the foundation of all sales things that you guys will do later on in life, especially if you want to find out how business works. All right, so simplify for X. So we're going to move this to the other side. All right, and then you do your math on this. So this comes out to be... You just drop 47502 here, and it's going to equal, and I got it at 1575 x. Now you divide both sides by 1575, and when you do this again, you would want to put it into a calculator, and x comes out to be 3016. Books, and that's a horrible looking six. All right, so understand what you're looking for here, right? So we know we got had to print out 3,000 and sell 16 books in order to break even. Anything above and beyond that, of course, is profit for the publisher. All right, what I want you guys to do now is on this same style setup of these questions, go ahead and look at them both and answer them accordingly. All right, so on this, make sure you do the same setup, right? You're going to put it on each side. So as you go through one time in production, so one time cost is 42336, and it's going to be 
1.5x per book, and they're going to sell them for $19.50 a book. Okay, so you don't have to put that zero in at the end uh, if you're going to know exactly what you're doing. Now, from the looks of this, I can tell they're not charging very much, and the variable cost is kind of high. So I have a feeling this number is going to be much higher than what our previous example was. All right, so you have your cost, 42.336, and it's going to equal 9 x it's going to be 9.0 but just 9 x okay then of course divide both sides by 9 all right and then x equals a dollar amount or a number of 4007 sorry i'm trying to read my handwriting 704 okay and that would be books right so we know they got to sell a lot of books it's about, uh, our previous example, it's about 1,700, so 1,700 more books. So that's why sometimes when you guys say, why are things so expensive, this actually has a lot to do with it, depending on the cost factors of everything that is involved. All right, Raphael, one of two plans, first and second. All right, the first plan has no initial fee, but costs 90 cents a mile. The second plan has an initial fee of 50 bucks, and seven cent, 70 cents a mile. So basically, when do they cost the same, right? So you can take this one and go it in. So it's gonna be equals 0.9x. You don't have to put the zero anymore. So if I subtract 0.7x and 0.7x here, and I do my math, that is 50 equals 0.2x. And you would divide both sides by 0.2 and you end up with x equals, again, 250 miles. Different, pro, uh, different actual question, but the result was actually the same as the previous answer that we had. So make sure you guys can do these on Alex, okay? Now we're gonna get into some awesome square footage. Now I wanna make sure you guys can actually do these things. And this is one of those things where you're like, a variable on both sides is slightly challenging, but I gotta make sure you guys can start to do these setups. Now this is actually something that we're throwing in on this lesson because it showed up when I was doing the Alex homework, kind of like um, figuring out what is associated with this lesson. And near the end, they talk about squares. So I'll do the top three, I will back out, and you guys will do the bottom three. All right, a square has an area of 36 square feet. What is the length of each side? You're like, what? Okay, so what it is is that we know, remember what is the area of a square? it would be x times x, right, or x squared. Okay, so you're basically it's side squared, right, where you times the sides by each other. Okay, so if, my, if it equals 36 feet squared, and I've got x squared over here, what, you have to think to yourself, what two numbers multiply together to make 36? Well, this one's simple. This would be x equals six. So what's the length of each side? It is six feet. Okay, so because f six times six is 36. So I just took the square root, which I didn't write on here. If you want me to write square root, you can. You'd go like that and like that, and then that's how you would figure that out. All right, square, once again, has an area of 81. So it would be 81 yards squared. Same thing. It would be what? x squared. So what two numbers multiply to make 81? That would be x equals nine yards. All right, simple, right? It's not very difficult. I want to make sure you guys can do this. And then the last one, a square has an area of four meters squared. What is the length of each side? We know again, if it's one side and you multiply the two sides, then you would take the square root of four, which means x equals two meters. Now put the, um, make sure you guys put the right yardage in there so you guys know. Okay, now I'm gonna back out. Or actually, I am going to show you the square has a perimeter now. Okay, so remember, that was the area. Those are simple enough. Now we're going to do the perimeter ones. Okay, so on perimeter, make sure you guys remember, all right, you're adding up all four sides, and when you add it all up, it's 144, right? So have to ask yourself, what does that mean? Well, if I have sides like this, draw a picture, please. How many x's do I have? I have four unknowns. So technically, this is 4x equals 144. <gasps> Ooh. Now you divide both sides by four, and I don't know if you can see that four, eh, you barely. 
And then you do the math on it, ladies and gentlemen, and x comes out to be 36. All right, so each side is 36, okay? And that would be y, v, yards. All right, same. Square has a perimeter of 44, right? So we know it's got a perimeter and it's got 44 on the inside. And you have four on the outside like this. So we know this is 4x equals 44. And I can do that in my head. That x would be 11 yards. All right, last one. Square has a perimeter of 32. What is the length of each side? All right, make sure you set it up. Hopefully you pause the video. If not, that's OK. You just saw me back out for a reason, for no reason. All right, 4x equals 32. Divide by 4, you'd get x equals 8, right? So just know how to set these up, okay? Because they, they may be asked, but what you're going to do is start learning to draw a picture, not only on those, but when we start to get more complicated ones like this, okay? So I'll do the first two, and then you guys will do the last one. So pause the video at the end. All right, a perimeter of a rectangle now. So we got a rectangle. And the perimeter is 252. So we know all around it is 252. If the width of the field is 52, okay, then do we know what the length is? Okay, the answer is no. And remember, perimeter is just adding up the sides, right? So if this is 52, I know that this is 52, which means that we don't know what these two are. So you add everything together. So this is about you drawing a picture, using your imagination, and trying to figure things out. So um, what you want to do is, you can write it out like this if you want, x plus x, and then there's 52 plus 52, and it equals 252, right? Now you can combine like terms. So I have a 2x, and I got plus 104 equals 252, and then you simply subtract, right? So subtract 104, all right, so you get 2x. And that's going to equal, now you do your, uh, your uh, setup on that, and that's going to be 148. Divide that by 2, x equals 74. So if I wanted to go back up here, I would say this is no longer x, it's 74. If I add all four sides up, I would get 252. Okay, so understand that. All right, the area of a rectangle. Okay, now this is different. We had perimeter, now we have area of a rectangle is 5,723. Okay, remember how you do area. Area is length times width. If the width, uh, the length is 97, what is the width? We don't know. Simple though, because all it is is this is your start, this is your problem. 97x equals 5723. By the way, you use this a lot in construction and other areas like that, where you may have to figure out how much total square footage you need, so that way you can go in and buy the right amount of tier materials and not overspend on a budget, okay? Um, a lot of contractors do this, because the worst thing you wanna do is have a lot of materials left over when you could have been saving plenty of money. So it's 59 centimeters, okay? The last one, it's a length of a rectangle, and talks about a perimeter. Good luck setting that one up. All right, for everybody here, let me make sure you guys draw this one out, okay? You may have been stuck, or maybe you had, you tried it. Good for you. All right, so let's read the problem. It says the perimeter is 56, okay? So we know we got 56 equals way over here. All right, the length of the rectangle is four yards longer than the width. So we got a width here. And our length is going to be the width plus 4, okay, because it's 4 uh, yards longer. There's our setup, okay? Draw a picture, guys. You're going to be telling, I'm going to tell you that all year. I can't stress enough how much you're going to have to do it in geometry. Now, we're just going to skip a step here because we're going to add all the things up. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4 x's, and then I got plus 8 equals 56. Okay, now you can do your math. Minus 8. And you have 4x. Oh, my hair got in the way. 4x. And that equals 
48. Divide that out, ladies and gentlemen, you get x equals 12. Now, what does that mean? Find its width and length. So that means the width is 12. But then that means the length is 12 plus 4, which is 16. There is your setup when you got it. If you guys have any questions about this, please let me know. We are going to have this on the homework. Most likely you'll see this a lot of times because I know we, uh, they test this on Galileo as well in the year. If you have any questions about this long lesson, okay, the next two are only two pages, the next couple ones, so we won't have anything as long. Please make sure you come see me. Okay? We're challenging you. I want you to strive to be great because, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to, do, uh, to be great in math overall and to understand as many concepts as possible. Until the next time, see you guys later.